Hi, it's definitely time for a new video. I have got so many things piled up that I want to show you that I don't even know where to start. So then I thought, okay, let's start with an empty desk and start filling it. What do I have here? This is the original design of the power bus bars. There's some significant amount of work involved in making these. And I thought I had to improve this. Um, and then I came up with this one here. These are aluminum laser cut. This is how they arrive here. I have to sand them a bit and I plate them with nickel. And after doing this, they look like this. Uh, they should not oxidize and the resistance is also very good. It's less than 40 micro ohms from here to here and they are not heating up even during torture testing of the new battery that I will talk about later. So this is not a weak spot. This was the first electrode design that I made. And this was the second one. I substantially reduced the amount of work that is involved here, much less machining, but I found that the electrical connection uh, to the electrode is too weak and it's heating up too much. Uh, so I came up with another one. Generation 3 electrode holder. It's this one here. It's very simple. It's made from the same brass tube as I used here. But I threaded it instead and you can now screw in the electrodes. Very simple. And there was a discussion that maybe the electrical connection of the thread could damage it or or weld them together. But I found already during testing that even fastening them hand tight is more than enough because the electrode directly pushes against the the end of the copper so the first connection is made between these two and the uh, tube is more or less only holding it so very simple and you can see that this is still brass i have ordered copper rods but they haven't arrived yet that's now three generations of electrode designs here's the second one Put this on the table. The weather supports firmware update. Um, you connect this to a PC and this to the welder and I will show you how it works. Today these arrived. This is the first attempt to make a case for the welder. The next thing that I found is that all the nickel strips that I have been using here, these and also these, have proven to be nickel plated steel and they are not pure nickel and I'll show you how to test it. If you scratch them like this and you see sparks flying, that means that you have steel this is 0.2 millimeter nickel and you can see when I do this again here there's no sparks this means this is pure nickel you maybe still know this battery which I used in the first videos and you can see that it has a quite significant swell you can see it here I definitely don't recommend using these and I ordered one of these these are same capacity but look at the discharge uh, rate they say 130 C now this is a 130 times 5 amp hours which is a 650 amps of of course peak uh, but rated discharge current we still exceed this in the welder, but I found that these are worth a try. I start with the firmware update feature. This is still looking a bit ugly, but I already have ordered uh, some nice um, connector boards here. And this is a standard uh, USB to serial converter. 
and these cables are also part of the kit which I have put on the website for pre-order. This is how it works. So you connect it to your computer. This is a mini USB cable. It's not part of the kit so you have to supply this by yourself. Connect it to the red socket there like this. Power it up. I will go to an on-screen video of my computer now. What you can see here is a tool which is familiar to many people, uh, PuTTY. And this is a special version which is called Extra PuTTY, which has some extended features which we need here now. The feature that is necessary is file transfer capability according to the Y modem standard, because this is what the welder accepts as a file transfer from it. So the welder is now in normal operation mode and it's waiting for a special character to switch into a bootloader mode. The character is of course letter K, a small K, I press it now. You can now see that it's printing out something, it's waiting for an option. You can press A to reset into the application again and that's, that's taking you back to where you were. Or you can press Y, I do it now. Now it's waiting for a firmware update file. And I do like this. Files transfer Y modem send. Now it's transferring the file. It's not taking too much time. And if everything went okay, it tells you, it's this one here. And it's also shown on the LCD of the system. And now you can press A to reset into the application. And as you can see, it's back with a new firmware code. As simple as that. It was important for me to find a solution that is um, possible to do without any special tools or any um, applications that I have to provide. All you need is a terminal program that can talk Y modem through a serial connection and it's possible to find something for any operating system. Putty is only an example. For Windows I also like to use TerraTerm and there are lots of other programs that you can use on Linux. Just a short look on the welder. This is how it looks like now with aluminium bus bars from the top and from the bottom. Except for the PCB here, which is still prototype, this is also the configuration that is on sale on the website. This is what you will receive when you make an order. Okay, I want to assemble the case. What you need to do first is um, to remove the standoffs here. I've already done this. I just slide it in. There's no screws to fasten the PCB. That will be done by the upper shell. That's it already. You can see the upper shell has some standoffs to push down the PCB. Like this. Make sure that you don't cut the cable. And then tighten four screws which will also be provided and you're done already. Be careful with that because this is 3D printed material so don't over tighten them. This is how it looks like when it's finished. I think the screws are okay. Now you have a system which is isolated, which is very important because when you run it on a battery and make a short circuit left to the fuse, you will still burn your house. So I don't recommend to use the welder open frame. If you don't use the case, at least wrap some heat shrink around it or something similar. So you have to make sure that you cannot make a short circuit in this area. Some words to the battery. I have done a torture test of the entire system with a new battery. And instead of welding, I was uh, using this brass bar 
which has a defined length and a defined resistance of approximately one milliohm. And I was firing pulses into it until uh, the his system was heating up too much. And then I was making a break and then I was continuing. And the result is quite impressive because this is how the battery looks after the test. And I've got some numbers. I will add a link in the description of this video uh, where you can download the test result data. I could fire 918 pulses of 30 joules approximately each using one battery charge. The total energy that was delivered into the well spot or into this brass bar was 27.6 kilojoules. And what I find very impressive is that the battery was discharged in 15.1 seconds at an average current of 1400 amps and it survived this very well there's no swell i measured the thickness before and after there's no difference it is handling this misuse very well and i can definitely recommend this type of battery here they are doing better than expected i also calculated the system efficiency because i know the energy which is stored in the battery when you calculate this you come to 200 kilojoules and and when i divide the 27.6 by the 200 i come to a system efficiency of 13.8 percent at this configuration with one milliohm uh, of resistance in the well spot of course there are a lot of parameters which change but this gives you a rough number of how to choose a power source like a capacitor or a battery and what you can get out of it then.